Hello, everyone, and welcome to Flowering Creativity, the podcast where we explore the lives of creative people and provide practical tips for achieving and sustaining your creative lifestyle and goals. With me today, I have Cadrian Thomas, who, despite his humble beginnings, stepped into his purpose when a stranger, Winston Mundy, gifted him his first saxophone at Northern Caribbean University, age 22. Winston, now deceased, was a lover of Kenny G's music and sensed potential in Cadrian. This gift served as proof to Cadrian it's never too late to step into your purpose and that with commitment, consistency, and passion, your soul will reveal itself. Cadrian is a grateful man, and through his work as a teacher, songwriter, and recording artist, he hopes to pass on his legacy. He currently resides in China with his wife and best friend Christina and hopes to be a source of inspiration, motivation, and healing to others online. A man of many talents, I personally enjoy Cadrian as the sax habit coach. His soulful saxophone covers, and especially his awesome new song, I Am a Target. Everybody, welcome Cadrian Thomas. All right, thank you. Uh, well, you know, um, what inspired that song actually is as a result of what's happening globally, you know, um, with Black Lives and George Floyd and. Um, my personal experience as well, where um, when I was in the States in 2009, as a student, I went to visit in the summer. I was going home and two cops pulled me over. I was walking, actually, and they frisked me, you know. And so looking back at that, I could have been one of those persons who could have been like Floyd, you know. And so it was out of that experience and what people of color like myself have been going through for a very long time, over 400 years. That is what has inspired me to write this song and hope to pass on the message that, hey, don't treat us as a target because we are one. By systemized injustice, yes, I am a target. Cause of the color of my skin, I'm shooting. I am a target. I was uprooted, no constantly looted. I am a target. Let's check the history book of those who started. Uprooted from the motherland, enslaved by Babylon. Hated, resented, cause I'm an African. Kneeling and in a cover man, they must see that's all wrong. I'm not just anyone, I'm a black man. Shouted, I can't breathe, bleed, I can't breathe, mama, I can't breathe. Please help me, I can't breathe, and the groaning stops. Life's not brought by cops. Innocently murder plus a false attack. I am a target. Being oppressed by systemized injustice, yes, I am a target. Cause of the color of my skin, I'm shooting, I am a target. I was uprooted, no constantly looting, I am a target. Let's check the history book of those who started. First they loot us, stole us, bought and sold us, enslaved and raped us, then lynched and shoot us. Claim they free us, turn brown and oppress us, misuse and abuse us, mistrust and frisk us, underpay us, deny our status. There's no charge but they incarcerate us, each day they scare us, brutally tear us, the insults, the pain, the shame I will no longer contain. I am a target. I love that second verse, man. Oppressed and demonized by social (laughs) interests. Yes, I am a target Cause of the color of my skin I'm shooting I am a target I was uprooted, no constantly looted I am a target Check the history book, it's you who started Kings and queens, rise up Kings and queens, stand tall up Kings and queens, let's speak up Equal rights and justice, let's unite up. Don't treat me as a target. <laughs> Give me freedom, equal rights and justice. Don't treat me as a target. Don't take my life from me, you're paid to protect it. Don't treat me as a target. It's time to change the history book, rewrite it. Don't treat me as a target. It's you who started me, I ask you to end it. Don't treat me as a target. Don't treat me 
Very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just, I love the lyrics to that song. It's, it's just so inspiring. I just, I enjoy listening to it over and over again. Thank you so much oh. for bringing that incredible Thank song into you. the world for us, Kadrian. Thank you. Definitely. So, uh, you know, being a songwriter myself, it's really, really, really important um, to me to stay flowing to stay creative and in a couple of conversations that we've had before um, the idea you had of, of of the cup what i have inside of me i am putting out there and it is as you move the universe pours more into you mm -hmm. because when a cup is full nothing else can go inside of it right mm -hmm. and the more you put out what is inside of you it, it's like it's watered Mm -hmm. And so, like a plant, you plant a seed, one seed, and it grows into a tree and it produces a lot of mangoes. Mango is my favorite fruit, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can replant or you can feed a lot of people. Your ideas, you have to just move with it, you know, mm -hmm. no matter where it's at, just move with it. And after a while, a snowball effect is going to take place. Mm -hmm. I believe that. It's going to snowball. Right, that's really stuck with me a lot. Where yeah. you know, um, I'll get an idea in my head, and I'm like, "Ooh, ooh, my cup is being filled!" Right, so right. I'm not expecting the full idea right then. So exactly. I, I, I did this um, this thing the other day. Uh, I really want to thank you for it. Where um, <laughs> I, I, it was inspiring. I, 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 I really? went for my I went for my jog right, and uh -huh. um, and I opened a lyric, uh, not a lyric, a, a, a file for to type, and so right. I, I typed one line. And then I went out and I jogged, and I was jogging, and oh, another couple more lines popped in my head, so I went exactly. and I typed them. Then I went back out and I jogged more, and, I, doo -doo 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 -doo. and then a couple more lines popped. In. So the glass, it, right? I kept emptying, drinking from the glass, and then it kept getting refilled. It was beautiful. So I just, I, I don't know, just a, a little bit of, uh, of of discussion so far has already been so helpful to me. I hope that we can really help a lot of people today with this. Oh yeah, I mean, when you get an idea, like for example, this song, right? The way I wrote this song, I was in the kitchen preparing breakfast um, for my wife and I, and the line came. That was all that came, you know, I am a target. And so then a little part of the melody came, and so I added that part. And while I was working throughout the day and going along, and when I went to the supermarket like you, you were jogging, I, you know, another line came. And so I keep adding the lines, keep adding the lines. And then when it was all done, I mean, some of the words didn't fit. <laughs> When I, send it, when I sent it to the producer, he was telling me that there were a couple of bars missing from the first verse. And so I, I had to add another two bars to make it complete. You know, so that's how you do it. You, you take a piece, you add to it, and when the inspiration comes, then you keep moving forward. And that's what I, I read something recently that as creatives, as musicians, sometimes it can take weeks to write a song, maybe months, even a year sometimes. It's dependent on what you are writing about or what you want to sing about. But then you start where you are and keep adding to it until it's complete. I, I think it's really important um, that we kind of give everybody a little bit more of an idea about, you know, how you would describe your work. Um, and how do you use creativity in your work? And, you know, what are your current creative goals, my friend? Well. As it relates to creative, um, creativity in my work, I mean, as musicians, we are creative. What I do is creative. You know, if I'm doing a cover, I am doing creative work. Um, if I'm making a video to present content on YouTube, etc., I am being creative because I'm thinking of how I can best put this forward so that the person I'm presenting to can understand and then take what I've presented and incorporate it in their own lives. You know, as a creative person, one of the things I am working at is becoming better at managing my time, for example, so that when my creative juices flow, I can just sit in front of a camera or sit on a podcast like this one and then just let the content flow and so that it can benefit others. And then in addition to that, I'm also working on my membership site so that I can help beginner saxophone players to move from point A to point 
Z or point B, right? Excellent. We're going to talk <laughs> a lot more about that as we go on here. Um, but, you know, I want to get to the to the routine because I mentioned jogging. Um, to me, I, f I spend a lot of time um, in the morning exercising because right. I found that if I don't, um, I generally am not feeling as good later in the day. And I mean, right. I do have a, a rest day where maybe I'll just walk, right? Mm -hmm. um, actually, yesterday we just went for a nice hike, uh, maybe a right. couple miles over an hour and a half. So it was it was very low low stress, but. Um, you know, to me, moving my body is a really important meditation. It gets me clear and ready to be creative and do things after that throughout my day. So do you have a daily routine? And, you know, what do you do in order to keep yourself feeling creative? All right. So for me, um, I wake up every day at 4.50 a.m., right? <laughs> That's the first part of my routine. And then I do like a 30 to 45 minutes um, exercise. Sometimes I go walking. Other times I do push-ups and um, sit-ups and stretches and so on. And then in addition to that, I do journaling. You know, every morning I write in my journal, regardless of the day of the week, um, or whatever I have to do. And so my morning routine really protects the beginning of my day. So between 4.50 and 7 o'clock, that's during that time, I take the time to pour into myself. And then I love reading, so I read as well. And that sets me up for the day. If I don't do that, then I'm in problems. And I've been doing this for a while, and I cannot see myself not doing it going forward. Like, it's something I'll be doing forever. Because once I do that, my day gets going. Absolutely. Really cool. Um, and, you know, as the Sax Habit Coach, um, you know, you, you really uh, mention uh, good practice habits and, you know, motivation and excuses and those type of things. So um, I really, really enjoy that work that you're doing uh, on YouTube. Thank you. Thank Definitely. You. Um, so what, uh, what challenges have you faced that disrupt your creative flow? Three things. Three things. Um, I don't have my phone with me right now, but social media is a disruptive element for me. And so of recent times, I have found a way how to deal with that. Because if I start browsing in the morning, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, I found that it saps my energy, you know, because as Sophie Leroy says, you have what is called attention residue, is that when you spend some time on an activity, you leave some of the bandwidth that you wake up with on that activity. And so it takes about 15 minutes to 30 minutes for your brain to reset. So let's say I was reading, right? And then automatically I just stop reading and start to practice my on my saxophone. It means it's going to take some time for me to recalibrate in order to get into this new thing that I'm doing. And so I've, I've found that with social media, it's so draining and it takes away so much of my mental bandwidth that it disrupts my flow. And I'll go for the day and find myself not doing anything. You know, the next thing that would disrupt my flow is watching the news. And so I stay away from it because it doesn't do me any good. So I stay away from that, you know. And then the final thing that also disrupts my flow is if I don't get a good night's rest. So now I'm well rested because I went to bed early last night, you know. If I don't put in my seven and a half hours because you need like five sleep cycles and one sleep cycle is like 90 minutes. And so you need five of those every night for your body to really recoup for you to take on the next day. And if I don't, if those three things, if I don't work on them and have them, you know, on point, then it disrupts my flow and it gets into my creativity. And then I just drag along through the day and nothing gets done. So, yeah. I'm really enjoying um, having this opportunity to talk to you. So Me too. Definitely. Let's um, let's shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. How has the pandemic situation affected your work? Well, in terms of my work, I'm a teacher. Okay, so in terms of that, that side of my work is fine. Okay, in terms of my creativity, um, I've had more time to do more of what I want to do. Of course, yes. But there's also a drawback, you know, when you're not interacting with people, it's a different kind of situation than when you're just by yourself, right? Um, so 
in terms of that, I, I, I don't have any like online programs running now. I have a, maybe one free course that I run, but I don't have anything online that's generating income so far. So in terms of that, and I don't have like a brick and mortar business like I had in the past. So it has not affected me too badly in that sphere, you know. Um, but I know for people like yourself who has your own thing that you offer, your, your, your teaching online and so on with students, it may be a bit different for you. But for me in that sphere, it's not too much of a disruption. Only that now I have to teach online, right? I can't go into the classroom with my students, which it takes more work to teach over like Zoom, for example, when you have 60 people in a class, you know, if it's one on one, it's fine. But when you have 60 students sitting in front of you and you have just a small screen and then you're trying to teach a foreign language, it's, it's different. Yeah. Very interesting. So you're actually teaching English or what are you teaching? That's cool. Right. <laughs> Very cool. I actually have another friend um, who actually teaches English to people in China from Los Angeles. Yeah, you have people who, who do remote work because before I came here, I actually worked with the Chinese from Jamaica, you know, um, but it was in another sphere. I was doing customer service um, work. So I would represent their customers in Europe, in the UK, in the US, um, Canada, and so on. Yeah. Very neat. Very neat. Let's talk about uh, one, one, one of your videos that I mentioned that I really enjoyed was your video on excuses. So mm -hmm. give me some of your pointers for dealing with excuses on a daily basis. <laughs> for myself, I just have to get moving, right? Because once the pendulum starts to move, then it picks up momentum. So for me, I find that when I think too much about an idea, like, let's say I get an idea for a topic that I want to cover. Like, I have about 15 video ideas that I haven't shot yet, <laughs> right? But I'm getting there. So, you know, for me, it's in the start. Once I get the idea and I move with it, then automatically I will just overcome my, my excuses. But once I start to think, okay, um, the background, all right, when I'm going to use green screen, all right, whatever. And I start to think about too many things, then it doesn't get done. You know, like the song that you mentioned, my song, I am a target. When I got the idea, I kept at it. So each time, like you, you went jogging, right? So every time I got a line, I wrote it. And then I thought about it and I wrote it. And I kept moving. So that's how I overcome my excuses. I don't have any other way but to move. Because once I, I move, it's going to get done. But if I don't move, then uh, I become cranky. And then it doesn't get anywhere. Absolutely. Uh, it's it, the, 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 the stagnation, Yeah. right, of, of not moving mm -hmm. on an idea um and and you know it, it doesn't always have to be um instant but you know i i see what you're saying right to grab it and just take that idea and just do whatever you can with it right in that moment and just be grateful for it even if it's just a fragment that you right. use I, later i think i i totally think what beautiful. happens to us a lot, a lot of, time of time is that we're trying to make the idea perfect and you can't make an idea perfect until you've tested it Right. I mean, let's take one of these big companies like Apple. Apple is not where it is today if they had not moved through the stages of Apple. Right. It's not where it was when they just started all the techno and all the fancy stuff, but they moved with what they had. And then over time, it snowballed. Right. It's the same thing with your idea. After a while, it will create a snowball effect because you're moving. You take the idea. OK, this is just the skeleton of the idea. But then you're going to add some meat, some flesh on the idea as you go along. So just move. I love that. So how do you manage your stress? My stress, um, <laughs> going back to a, a previous point I made earlier, the news is one of the biggest stresses for me, right? That's number one. And so I've tried to avoid the news, especially during this um, global pandemic. I limit the amount of the news I take in. Now, there's a lot going on over where you are, you know, in, in the US. And so I try to limit that. Because once I start to watch or take in too much of the news, it depresses me. And so, again, it goes back to the point of your creativity. It saps that, and therefore I can't move. So I try to avoid the news as best as is possible. And then 
I seek to keep in my creative flow because let's say at the end of the day, I cannot recount what I have done throughout the day. It also stresses me like, okay, I didn't write any content today. Okay. I didn't put up a video today. All right. I practiced, but I didn't go deep, you know, because there's a difference between practicing and deep practice. You know, deep practice has, um, some amount of deliberate, um, effort put into it. And so those are the things that really stress me, you know, the news. And so I avoid that and then um, just use up my creativity. And once I do that, at the end of the day, I can say, okay, five things. I have written down five goals and okay, at least I've gotten three of them, you know, because we are mentally, um, our brains are wired to see the negative things all the time. And so we often overlook the positive. So let's say you set five goals for the day. You only accomplish two or three. You give thanks, you know, and that will, uh, if you do that over a period of time, then um, you will start to look at the positive side of things. So that's what I try to do each day um, to keep my stress levels down. Okay, so somebody is, um, eh, I don't know, man, you know, I, I want a little bit more information. I, I, I'm still not, I'm still not thinking, you know, this is enough to regain my flow. What, what additional advice would you offer that's something, you know, in deeper than we've talked about or, you know, another, another idea, another approach? To, to regain their flow, um, I've found, um, you have to find something that works for you, okay? So for example, there is this guy, uh, he, wrote, he wrote this book called um, Robin Sharma, okay? Love this book. <laughs> this book has helped me to wake up for more than 400 and something days, nonstop, every day, 450, no excuses, rain or shine, snow or heat, I've awakened because of this book, right? So when I want to recalibrate, I usually go to this book. I have it in um, book in this form. I also have it in the audio version. So there are some points which he makes in it about becoming world-class leaders and all of that. And so when I listen to him, he hit a nerve with me, you know. So for a person who wants to get back into flow, you have to recognize for yourself what is that thing that causes you to tick. Okay. Is it making a video? And when you make the video, you, um, you feel a sense of accomplishment. Okay. Go make that video. So whatever it is, you know, that gets you into flow. So I have found that reading for me is what gets me into flow. If I am not reading enough, cause I read every day, but sometimes you don't feel like doing it and you may just put in five or 10 minutes, you know, but when I'm doing deep reading, like I am on this, um, journey now where I just started the other day that, for the next 30 days, I'm challenging myself to read for two hours every day. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to sit down at one sitting and read for two hours. I may split it over the day, okay? 25 minutes here, 30 minutes there, because it's easy to just grab your phone. Let's say you're editing a video and you need to export it. It's going to take some time for it to export, right? Sometimes we sit at the screen and we're there scrolling on Facebook and YouTube, not doing anything, okay. I am developing that habit where instead of going on my phone, I just use my book, I grab my book and replace that habit, you know, because as I said to you, the phone, it disrupts my flow. And so what I do, I stop checking Facebook and YouTube in the mornings. You know, I made an exception, like for you now, I'm coming on here and maybe you need to contact me through Facebook or whatever. I and I rarely make these exceptions. And outside of going to your message, I just shut it down and then maybe five or six o'clock later, um, cause it's daytime for me here, then I'll do that. Yeah. So you have to find that thing that makes you tick. If it's walking that makes you tick, go walk, right? If it's whatever it is. And then when you get into flow, stay there, like continue to build on it. You know, um, I read this great quote some time ago that novices waits on inspiration, but the rest of us just show up and do the work, you know? So, um, if you're waiting on inspiration to strike, it may not come, 
But when you keep doing something every day, after a while, you're going to find yourself in the flow state. And when you're in the flow state, don't stop. Because it's like your exercise, you're walking. If you're walking every day of the week, and then you walked for 14 days straight, and then one day you decide, oh, I'm not going to walk. When you begin to, when you try to walk again on the 16th day, or 17th, or 18th day, because you have missed two or three days, it's very hard for you to, to get back, the, to get the pendulum to move again. So even a small amount, you know? So if you write um, one piece of content or whatever you do on that particular day, or there's something you need to learn on your saxophone, learn that one thing today and, and stay there and keep moving forward. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Uh I don't know, the mute button there wouldn't turn off. <laughs> I clicked it like three or four times like, okay, okay, come on. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one thing that I, I wanted to bring up um, was I really like the video effects in your latest video that you put up, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? I, I thought that right. it was really cool how um, oh, you were using you. the green screen thing. Um, right. Uh, you were translucent. And then make it translucent. Mm. Yeah, and then, and then it looked like the one part um, where you were singing, you were actually on location because I saw like another person back there. And they were like moving around yeah. and stuff, and I didn't think you could have done that with a green screen. I was like, "What?" That'd no, be I, I wasn't. I wasn't cool. All the parts where I sang, all the parts where I sang, I was on location. I, I, if you look at it, you would recognize that's not green screen there. The only part I did the green screen for was the saxophone part because I wanted my my fingers to move a certain way and um, sometimes you know when you practice something you don't always play it the same way or record it the same way you practice it and so I, I recorded that while I was playing it so um, I did that part in the in my office and everything else I shot outside <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, so one thing that I'm working on is mm. holding myself accountable um, because um, we had a conversation on uh, Facebook or something where uh, it was in one of your no, it was one of your videos. It was the five right. things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, why yeah. don't you tell us about the five things? Real quick. Uh, Do you remember what we're talking about? <laughs> I, I, I don't remember all five of my head. But um, I, I, let me see if I can remember how, how many of them I remember. Okay. Um, accountability is one. Okay. The five hacks to stay, um, to, 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 to practice your saxophone. Accountability is one. You need a partner or somebody who, you, who will keep you accountable. So for myself, my wife is the one who keeps me accountable. If it reach... I usually practice at 2 p.m. each day, you know, because that's a, the window I have. And if my schedule changes, then I'll flip things around a bit, all right? And if it reaches a certain point of the day and I haven't practiced, then my wife will say, Kadrian, um, when are you going to practice? You know, so that holds me accountable to ensure that I practice every single day. And then I incorporate what is called the five minutes rule. So let's say for, so that's another thing I do um, as one of my hacks. Um, where if the day gets crowded with too many things to do, I at least practice for five or 10 minutes. I call it the five minutes rule. You know, it has more to it because um, the five minutes rule is really to build momentum. Once you practice for five minutes, you, oh, I'm done so quick. I just set my timer on my phone for five minutes. And when the five minutes goes off, I want to go to another five and another five and another five and another five until you're there and you practice for an hour, even though you only plan to spend five minutes. So that's another thing. Um, consistency. Consistency is the next thing. Um, consistency, I learned from this author, is the mother of mastery, you know. And so at this point in time, I have become so consistent at a number of things. I am still building because I'm not perfect. There are many things I'm still inconsistent with. But there is this thing that I learned that when the water rises in the dock, all the ships go up, you know. In the pair, in the pair, sorry. When the water rises in the pair, all the ships, the boats, they will rise. So what happens is that when you get consistent in one area of your life, then automatically it starts to affect the other areas. So you start with one thing. If it's reading, start with that one habit. The problem is most people are trying to start 10 different habits at the same time, and it doesn't work like that. Your brain is not going to be able to manage all of that. Hey, what are you trying to doing? I'm not used to reading for one hour. What are you doing? You're kidding me, right? So consistency is, is key. Um, what else? I, I can't remember the other two. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's all good, man. It's all good. So uh, consistency on that note, let's talk about a new schedule. I'm starting in September mm -hmm. uh, for my YouTube channel. Right. This is something that, that I feel is really important. So uh, from now on, starting in September, I'm going to have Flowering Creativity once right, every right. month. You'll be the very mm -hmm. first one for September right. edition. And then I'm going to have uh, Matthew's favorite covers right. once right. a week. I'm going to have Jam and Chat mm -hmm. once a week. And I'm going to have Mastering Music Lesson wow, once that's a week. a lot of work. So that way I'll be putting out... <laughs> I'll be putting out a minimum of three videos and uh, a week, and then they'll have um, original music um, sprinkled in whenever. Um, so that way, um, I can sort of kind of build up a backlog of content and have like a whole bunch of videos right, finished, right. right? That I haven't uploaded right. yet, and that way uh, it can take some of the stress yeah. out of it, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I you know, to kind you of know, get ahead. When, what I've found is that. Um, oh, scheduling was one of the five hacks, you know, schedule your time. So that's four, four out of the five, scheduling your time. What I've found is that when you have something to do, like a habit that you want to form, if you don't set a specific time for it to work, you'll find it won't stick. Okay. So for me, waking up at 4.50 every morning, I schedule the time. When it's time for me to practice, at 2 p.m., I schedule the time. You know, when I want to read, now my reading times are between 6 to 7 in the morning and then another time in the day. I think maybe 8 to 9 after I've had breakfast and stuff like that because my schedule is a little different from you guys, you know. So, um, so that's how I get things done. If I don't work with my schedule, then you find that you don't really get a lot of stuff done. You just go through the day and... Uh, you don't get a lot done. So when you schedule stuff like you now going into September, you're saying you're going to have this, that and that and that. If you have it set up where you say, OK, Monday, Mondays is for original music or Tuesday is for um, podcast, whatever. Just make it a schedule. Now on YouTube, I haven't been all that consistent because in the back end, I'm working on some stuff and those things are taking my energy and my time. And that is what I really want in my back end of stuff to really work. I mean, yeah, I want YouTube to work, but build YouTube around my life, not my life around YouTube, because that's what most of us are trying to do. We're trying to build our life around YouTube, right? But I want it all the way around. So <laughs> I'm working on my thing in the background and it's a lot of work. So um, I haven't been that consistent for the last maybe two or three weeks, but I'm getting on ba back on track. I'm just going to create a bunch of content and just schedule them to just, you know, um, post by themselves. <laughs> Cool. So uh, I just want to take a second and thank you so much for coming on Flowering Creativity, Kadrian. And I want to give you a chance to um, please go into detail. I want everybody to know that's watching how they can find you online, how they can uh, check out your program as you're releasing it, um, all the things that, uh, that you'd like to let them know. Now, now's your open floor. Go for it, my friend. All right, so you can find me on YouTube. That's where I'm at most often, YouTube. Uh, if you type in my name, Kadrian Thomas, K-A-D-R-I-A-N-T-H-O-M-A-S. And across all platforms, that's the one, um, that's the name I use. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Uh, I'm, I use Instagram, but not as much because I've found that it's like a, a hamster's wheel. <laughs> I don't like stuff where I have to keep doing it over and over and over and over, you know. Um, so you'll mostly find me on YouTube and Facebook, actually. And then my website, kadrianthomas.com, that's where I'm posting my stuff. And that's where I'll be releasing my um, courses my paid courses and paid memberships. Very so this is a worldwide launch, right? You could take the course yeah. from anywhere. From where and from, from anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. yeah. That's, mm -hmm. so, that's so cool, man. That's really cool. So you said you, you. it's like a subscription model. Will you tell us a little bit about how it's going to work? Yeah. So it's, a, um, it's like a membership site. So, you know, you pay monthly, but it's a fee that everybody can afford. And then I'll have videos in there and then what I'll seek to do I'll have a bunch of videos and then like each week or each month um, I'll continue to add new videos and then as a teacher 
Um, I'm working with a plan, so my plan is going to take you from A to B to C, whatever. It's not just some random stuff, you know? Like, when you're learning to play the saxophone, you go on YouTube, you have one million voices to listen to. There's no path for you to travel, for you to take that is going to give you a certain result. And so, what I am seeking to make is something that can take a beginner from, hey, I cannot even play a single note to, hey, be able to sight read to be able to um, play by ear, for example, to be able to develop their sound, which is very critical in playing the saxophone through a process, step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, Kadri and I are getting ready to head on to patreon.com slash Matthews Music Lesson Studio to do some additional bonus content for my wonderful patrons. So um, do you have a, a, a Patreon set up for us, Kadrian? I... I'm on Patreon, but I haven't set up one where you can um, patronize me just yet. Um, because w what happened is that I have recognized that when I try to do too many things at once, it doesn't necessarily work out for me, you know? So I am, I am trying to, still trying to understand YouTube, the algorithm, um, the thumbnails and um, scheduling of posting so that I can grow my audience there. And so I have not started any Patreon for that just yet. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kadrian, for being here with us on Flowering and Cre... <laughs> thank you so much, Kadrian, for being here with me on Flowering Creativity. My pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me on Matthew's Music Lesson Studio. Please share this video, like, and subscribe to join my more than 500 subscribers. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. And please continue to tune in for all the great shows that I have to offer you. Thank you so much for joining me. And did you know that you can get online music lessons from me on Zoom? I record it MP4 for you. And you can then review that lesson forever. You can have it so we can go over it. You can practice along with it. And then that way, no matter what, you can relax and enjoy the lesson. So please, MatthewsMusicLessonStudio.com. I'll see you guys next time on Matthew's Music Lesson Studio.